The world is a scary place out there. We can all agree on that. But the world with democracy, now that is still a scary Now that is something worthy of peace, prosperity, and the pursuit of happiness. And what's better than that? Spreading even more democracy, which you can do in Helldivers 2, the hit new third-person shooter game developed by Arrowhead Game Studios and published by Sony. In this game, the player acts as a Helldiver that travels the space system to spread freedom, peace, and most importantly, democracy in the name of Super Earth. While the characters portray that you are a freedom fighter for a utopian universe, it is very clear that this so-called democracy you are fighting for is quite dystopian in nature, especially when you just get sent in over and over again to get mangled by huge-ass bugs. Speaking of bugs, currently the story incorporates two different factions, the Terminids that are just alien space bugs, and the Automatons that are your token space robots. The lore at surface level is really simple, which complements the tongue-in-cheek humor the game utilizes to keep the mood light and enjoyable, which only amplifies the game loop further. The best way to explain the lore is that this game is just Deep Rock Galactic in a different font. To be honest though, the gameplay loop can be explained this way too, but that is a topic for a different video, so let's just keep moving. Helldivers 2 has an incredibly satisfying gameplay loop at its base level. When starting a game, the player picks a planet to play on, all with different innate effects like reduced visibility, earthquakes, or freezing that reduces overheat frequency. On each planet, players embark on operations that contain multiple missions to complete for experience to level up the player's character, medals to unlock gear in the battle pack, passes, requisition slips to purchase powerful stratagems, and even the premium currency, super credits. That's right, you could technically do this all for free. I really love how a player can get super credits for free and doesn't have to pay, especially when you already have to pay to play the game itself. Let's backtrack to stratagems though, because that is what I believe really sets Helldivers 2 apart from similar games like Deep Rock Galactic and even Destiny. Players are allowed 4 unique stratagems per mission. Currently, there are 47 to choose from, all with different power levels and uses depending on the player's level. The higher level a player is, the more they have available for purchase with requisition slips. Utility in a video game is nothing new, but the way that different stratagems synergize with each other is so satisfying. Like when you run EMS stratagems that stun enemies and send down a huge eagle bomb on top of them or just let a mortar take them out. It is satisfying. What might be even more satisfying though is the code that you have to input in to use each of these unique stratagems. I know this sounds so nerdy, but I've gotten so fast at throwing out the reinforced stratagem, I don't know, I just straight up love that shit. I am sure that if you have all been playing this game so far, you understand exactly what I'm talking about too. The depth of the game doesn't stop at stratagems though. It also develops within the armory where the player can change armor, grenade types, and weapons. New versions of all of these pieces of equipment can be found within the various war bonds that are given to the player, which are essentially battle passes and give stats like armor, speed, and stamina regen. Each piece of armor also gives unique perks like enhanced stealth or more grenades or even stims to round out your kit. Overall, well, it's a pretty small detail, but it gives the player agency to make decisions based on what they want to do and how they want to play the game, which is really fun. However, it is important to be critical when reviewing a game. Even if it is a lot of fun most of the time, sometimes there are things that really hold it back from being great. The reality of it is that you are going to be doing quite a bit of running in this game. It didn't take long for me to be like, damn. This is going to be a trip, which isn't exactly the most fun thing to have to do. I mean, if you like that shit, just play Walking Simulator. Humble the amount of time you are spending in a mission with the fun stability issues that the servers have that could possibly crash your game out of nowhere, and you are not going to be having a whole lot of fun. When I tell you I was about to fully complete a Difficulty 7 mission solo and crashed 10 seconds before my extraction came, I was irate. I sadly wasn't recording, you'll just have to take my word for it or ask more, he was there, but that's besides the point. In reality, I still woke up and hopped on the next day, so the game was still good enough to bring me back. Another problem with these types of games is that it absolutely sucks to play solo, and there is not really anything to compensate for a solo player experience. In other games, the player is given an AI companion that makes parts of the game easier to complete so that the game is at least playable. Running around solo in this game has got to be one of the most depressing experiences. The SOS beacon solves this problem by allowing other players to join, but that isn't everyone's cup of tea. Sometimes you just want to play alone. And oh yeah, Xbox doesn't have access to this game because Sony published it, so there is a good chance you can't even play with some of your friends. That doesn't exactly help in the solo situation.
One last problem with these types of games is that once you grind it for a while, there are only so many mission types, and it just starts to get really bland really quickly. I can only shoot so many ICBM missiles before the explosion takes away that whoa value. The developers do try to combat the running issues and repeating missiles though. A recent update just added mechs into the game, and there have also been some rumors about vehicles making it in at some point in the future too. At the end of the day though, these are just arguments of the base game, and this genre always has these challenges. That being said, this opens room for the discussion of the visual and audio design of Helldivers 2, which was done really well in my opinion. If you were going to be running a 5k every mission just to complete it, the environments better be immersive, and you better believe that they are. A lot of this footage was recorded on my 2060 Super over my spring break. I can't wait to see how this game looks on my 4080 supercomputer. That being said, even on what most people are starting to consider an older build, Helldivers 2 looks absolutely beautiful. What is really impressive to me though is just how many planets there are in this game and how every single one of them got love and attention. None of these maps look half-assed. They all have their own personality. The dunes look vibrant. I feel cold when shooting bugs in the Fenrir system and the water on every other planet looks gorgeous in my opinion. Graphically, the game knocks it out of the park. Moving on to the auditory design and it is arguably arguably even better. The environment is immersive with the visuals, but the sound effects of the guns, enemies, and even footsteps on the ground makes the game come to life. The music also plays a role in this too. You always know when a combat has started and a player has been spotted. The final push to survive as you are extracting is epic. I could go on forever. In brevity though, the music just makes me feel badass for lack of a better term. The best part of the audio in the game, hands down, are the voice lines though. In order for the humor to work, you really have to trust that the characters really believe what they are saying. Without that, the satirical nature of the game isn't funny and the illusion is broken destroying the bit. Thus, it is a very slippery slope, but Helldivers 2 does this very well. For example, the quote, how about a taste of liberty is really corny. I'm pretty sure we can all see that at face value. That being said, it's the fact that the Helldiver says it with such enthusiasm that makes it funny. You essentially are playing as a worker that is sent like a pig to a slaughterhouse, and yet you are so brainwashed by this dystopian message that you still die happy that you were fighting for your future of Super Earth. There are a whole lot of lines that are even funnier than that but my all-time favorite has to be when a player is shooting a full mag of an LMG and they just start screaming some of the funniest shit at the top of their lungs. The attention to detail in Helldivers 2 is sublime and has to be noted. It is what transcends the game into more of an experience than just a game. Before we move on to the final rating though, it is important that we discuss how Helldivers 2 innovates on the industry, or to be honest, the lack of innovation, which is something that really troubles me. This game doesn't exactly do things that no other game does, aside from the way that stratagems function. Is that really enough to warrant it becoming legendary? I really don't think so. When I think of this game, I just think of what Deep Rock Galactic does better, and the fact that it came out in 2020 for a fraction of the price, as well as being compatible with all major platforms aside from the Nintendo Switch. What really sets Helldivers 2 apart is the feel of the game. The game feels like it has a lot more of that AAA polish, while Deep Rock feels much more arcadey in nature. To say that the game doesn't innovate though feels entirely wrong, it's just not groundbreaking yet. I think after a few more updates and server stability fixes, the game will be in a much better spot. But it is because of some of the shortcomings discussed in today's video that I'm giving Helldivers 2 a very strong 7 to a very light 8. If the game came out just a little bit earlier, it probably would have had a higher rating. If the game didn't have some server stability issues, it would probably also have earned a higher rating. But with time, it will have these things, so maybe it will go up. But we have to rate it with the content that we have now. For $40, there are definitely other games that give you slightly more bang for your buck like Deep Rock Galactic, but at the end of the day, you can't be mad with what you get out of Helldivers 2. It's one hell of a good time. What do you all think of Helldivers 2? Do you love it? hate it, never even want to play it, let me know in the comments down below. Aside from that, thank you all so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.